Hello, 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 hello. Welcome back to Kerno EXP, a live stream or live in Cornwall. <laughs> okay, folks, so what I thought we'd do tonight, a bit late, of course, is paint the bum or the bottom part of the Stuka. Now, we've done the top, which is looking acceptable. So we're going to do the bottom half. So let's go, folks. There we go. So stick that over there. There we are. So the next aircraft after this one is going to be this one, folks. A British swordfish. What do you reckon? Nice, eh? Can you see that? Isn't that lovely? So you've got to even things up a bit. Because we've been doing American and we've got this Nazi one. So I thought we'd have a British one after this one. Right, so I hope you guys have had a nice day. The weather has been very good again. I haven't really done a great deal today, apart from uh, just the usual things, really. But uh, we're hoping to go out later this week. So I'm hoping, folks, um, we'll be bringing you some boat adventures very soon. Because uh, uh, I've said to a few of my friends that uh, I would like to get a rib, which is an inflatable boat, folks. A proper professional one, that is. Not a, not one of these ones you buy down at the beach sort of thing. It's uh, a proper rib with a proper floor. And, uh, you know, should be fun. And that will mean, folks, right, that will mean that Kerno EXP will be able to go land, sea and air. And I think that is uh, quite special, really. Land, sea, and air. And of course, later on this year, we'll be going underground. But we're not we're not quite ready for that yet. We will be. We will be in due course. Um, rather take my time in making sure I've got all the correct gear for that, which we've pretty much got it, to be fair. But it's just like. I need to get a couple more ascenders, descenders. I've got I've got one set, but um, because it's me and uh, well, the minimal minimal will be me and my good friend um, will be uh, doing that. So I need to make sure that he's got everything that he would possibly need to be safe. Like you know, because um, ascending and descending. Um, we we did some training uh, many years ago with a place called Bishop's Forum. You guys might have heard of it. Uh, it's where they do adventure training and what have you. And we did a little bit of it there. But uh, I think, to be honest, um, it would be better if I did a refresher, really. And uh, shall we say got to know the ropes? Well, I know the ropes, but it's just a figure of speech, isn't it? Um, I've been invited with a, a, a group of explorers, um, so I probably will take that up a little bit later on once I've got a bit accomplished. I don't want to go with these people and I look like a right twat sort of thing. I don't really want to do that. So, um, so yeah, the mine exploring will come. We will do the easy ones to start with. Now, once we've got a bit accomplished with using the ropes, we'll um, we'll do a bit more in depth, shall we say, folks? Al exploration. Hello, mate. How are you? Just building some model kits. <laughs> Been doing this for a while now, building these kits. Hope you're good, mate. 
not sure if you've done any videos today or no, but I'm going to check that out in a little while. So what we're doing is we're painting a Stuka, a Nazi, I don't know if you can see it or no, it's a Nazi tank destroyer one, this is. The previous aircraft I built was the Thunderbolts, and that's an American aircraft. I'm glad to hear you very good. Yeah, so going back to underground explorations, folks, um, I've got most of the gear now. I've got the harnesses. I've got the um, ascend a ascender, and I've got two descenders. Also, we bought um, this quite recently which is a pulley, and we've got the uh, lanyard here as well, which we bought amongst uh, all the other gear. Lots of it. Probably over the top, to be honest, but there you go, never mind. Right, now, that is looking not bad. Uh, is there any more, anything I've missed? Yeah, it's probably a little bit of there, to be fair. Yeah, we've had some fantastic weather in Cornwall of late. Um, I've got uh, a couple of videos backed up, which I'm going to try and release one for Wednesday. Good evening, Matthew. Yeah, yeah, it's coming along now. Yeah, I'm very pleased with that. So as I was saying a minute ago, folks, I don't know if you've seen or know, but the next aircraft after this is a swordfish. I believe this is the sort of aircraft that um, blew, dropped a torpedo on the Bismarck and blew its rudder out. So, you know, it's, uh, it's a good old aircraft. The next aircraft after that is going to be a Nazi again. Oh, dear. There you go. Messerschmitt 109. That's the next aircraft after that. And then, once I've done those two, I've got a epic model to explore, uh, to explore, to build. And it's the Lancaster Bomber. And... Uh, that might take quite a while, actually. <laughs> that might take quite a long time to build that one. But I think it's going to be a good one, like, you know. Oh, I didn't know it flew from the Ark Royal. Crikey. I was in right in saying that the swordfish dropped a torpedo at the Bismarck and damaged its rudders and the Bismarck was going around in circles and then the Royal Navy came along and basically blasted it to a build up to well to where it is right now under the sea like you know yeah right there we go so you might have noticed um, all of my aircraft I'm building they're all NATO green. <laughs> I've got a fetish for NATO green folks. <laughs> Which is not terribly good, is it, really? Never mind, eh? Um, yeah, so you guys that know me probably know that I'm into railways. And I volunteer at the Houston Railway. And I'm the chief locomotive cleaner. And my, my granddad actually used to work for the GWR in the local town here called Red Roof. And it was a good depot. And uh, he was he was there through the war years. And he was there right up until 1986 when he retired. 
and when he retired he was he said he could um have some items to remind him so uh here's one of them folks it's a railway lamp it's not just any old lamp it changes color so you've got green and you've got clear so you can, if you can see that that's the lamp inside there and then you've got the red as well well i've actually used this down at the railway at halston when we've had special open days so yeah it's quite a it's a family early in that and also downstairs i've got a british railways western region loco lamp which actually goes on the locomotive and uh they're they're quite hard to find well you can find them on ebay but this one's got um ah now did you have a pint of spingo now if you did i know the pub it's called the blue anchor <laughs> it blew, it's really strong strong beer that is it blows your socks off <laughs> Yeah, there's some good pubs uh, down here in Cornwall. Um, me and me and the wife, we often go to um, Weatherspoons, and uh, our favourite is Per and Porf, the Green Parrot. Our second favourite is the Weatherspoons in Helston. It's like a TARDIS. So you go in the main street, and uh, it just goes in and in and down, and and it just opens up to a massive place. The uh, third favourite Weber Spoons in Cornwall for us is St Ives. Uh, that's quite a nice one. Um, there's the Driftwood Spars in St Agnes. They make their own. They've got a microbrewery there, and uh, it's really, really nice. Oh, you was based at Cold Rose, crikey! So you, you know Cornwall fairly well then. Awesome stuff. Yeah, my, one of my good friends, uh, Chris, he used to work in RNS Cold Rose and he was in charge of doing the meals in that. He was making the meals for everybody. He's now moved over to Trelisk uh, doing catering over there in the hospital. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Goon Hill is still there, the satellite station, and which is quite interesting, actually. Um, where Goon Hill is, just next door to it, just down, there's an old RAF base, which is, dates from World War II, and it's called RAF Dry Tree, and they've got a command and control bunker there. And just down the road from there, they've got um, radar communication. I, I did film it some time ago. I need to go back and do it again, to be honest, but because of all this bloody situation that we've got, we can't really do a great deal, can you? Because I, I don't fancy getting a, a COVID fine, even though... I'm kind of doing YouTube, so therefore I'm kind of like working sort of thing, like like what the Secret Vault does. So, but I, we're, I think we're going to hang on until this damn situation's finished, and then we're going to get out there because we're going to get the new drone very, very, very soon now. So, um, it because obviously I've got the DJI Mavic Mini at the moment, and uh, well, the thing is, the Mavic Mini is an awesome drone. I, I'm so impressed with it. I just can't get over. It how good that is but um the mini 2 as you know it's got ocusync 2 so that means you can go farther feel farther with it and it's uh, better quality and what have you and it, and it's and it's quieter than the mavic mini as well which is good 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 so yeah so that'll be good um also we're going to get a rib inflatable boat something like what matthew's got but a bit smaller, probably about three meters long. Yeah, yeah, the weather will be better then. So we're looking forward to really getting getting out there. Because, um, like, recently I've only traveled, like, not really that far, which is not good, really. Um, but because there's a lot of people out there that will, um, well... <laughs> give you grief in it like you know so that's why i haven't really been doing a great deal of late but uh yeah but i will do definitely because we've got mine exploring planned 
We've got this boat explorations that we want to do down at the Carrick Roads, down at Falmouth, and on the north coast down over at Portreef, because it, the, the boat is inflatable, so therefore it's easily transportable. And uh, we're going to get a new outboard. I was going to get a four horse, but I might get a two and a half, I'm thinking. So... Oh, yeah, you've got the Mini 2 of you, Matthew. Oh, crikey, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've seen loads of reviews about it, and uh, we did buy the box for it recently. Uh, I'll just show you a minute. Let's move these stickers out of the way. <laughs> All right, so here's the, here's the original one, which is here. Um, I'll just quickly show you our famous drone. I won't show you the top because it's got my operator ID and all that on it. But there's the... There's the famous one that you've seen all my videos with. There he is. So we'll just shove him back in the box. But yeah, we bought the, the box in preparation for the Mini 2. And it's like this box here, but it's a different colour. You guys might have seen it on another video, but yeah, it's orange. Look. So uh, I just like these boxes because they're, they're really strong and sturdy. And uh, yes, yeah, so we're, we're ready to go, basically. So we're just waiting to to get that hopefully we might be able to order it this week so that'll be cool really really cool stuff so I'll just move that out of the way also folks um uh we've got this as well olight seeker 2 and i've got the h2r novas to go with that alw do you use olights i think you do don't you mate they're good torches they are. This is the um, just the Seeker 2, but later on I'm going to get the Seeker 2 Pro. So it's uh, I think this is two 2,300 lumen, and I think the Seeker 2 Pro is 3,000-something lumen, isn't it? which is pretty cool, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, they're good torches. I'll just show you my one. There we go. H2R Nova, good torch. Um, the reason I bought this, as you might know, because I, I do watch The Secret Vault a lot, and he had one of these. He, he still uses it, uses it on a regular basis. And um, also another channel that I like a lot um, is IKS Exploration. He instead uses these. Well, he did. I don't, I don't know what ones he's using now, but for, like, this is, a, this is basically an everyday torch, and it's fantastic. Two-wheel expiration. Hello, mate. How are you? I didn't see you there. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, so awesome torch, awesome piece of kit. So um, this is my go-to torch. I've got it on one of the helmets that we use for... Um, well, it's a multi-use helmet, actually. Here we go, folks. So it's a multi-use helmet. I don't just use it for going underground. I use it for cycling as well. It's got the uh, the rear light on the back, as you can see. But this is a proper. This is what it really is. It's a um, safety helmet for really for going underground. But because I do cycling as well, I just thought I'd use it for that as well. Like, you know, just hanging it up. Oh, this is a bit fiddly. There we are. There's it the way. I'll just show you some of the uh, gear we've got for going on the grain. So this is called a ascender, folks, and it basically allows you to climb up the rope. And then you've got the, um, this is the foot ascender here. And that allows you to climb up a rope. And if you're going down a rope, you've got obviously the traditional figure of eight. That's very traditional. But also we've got this contraption here which basically the rope um, goes in around the bottom and around and then up the top 
and you've got this lever here which is the brake and uh, so you can brake as you're going down but obviously with the figure of eight we've got we've got another one there with the figure of eight that you've got to really like move it to the side but with this it's, it's just a little bit easier so we've got that and uh up various other bits and pieces as well so uh, we're we're pretty much good to go i haven't got a four-way gas detector yet uh, because obviously some of the mines here in Cornwall, the air is pretty stale. But I, I did a bit of training quite a few years ago with a, a um, it's an outdoor um, company called um, Bishops Forum, and it's a few years ago that I actually did that. So I need to like refresh before I really do anything really really serious. But there is a few good ones um, in Cornwall where it's pretty easy access so i may not need all the rope access um situation like you know so it, it might be the case where we just go with a little bit of rope and uh you know just to test the gear out really i need to get another gopro this is the this is the waterproof case for the gopro this is the hero 5 in there so we need to um get another one of those because i've damaged that one it's, it's only the back screens any damage and of course um we've got the old uh dji osmos 2 which i want to upgrade that to the three so i haven't used that for ages but it's still it's still good to go shall we say you know it's it's quite a quite a good camera that so yeah but we're looking forward to getting out and about like you know should be right good so uh does anybody have any questions uh regarding uh anything i've said about or anything no no questions also we'll be bringing our uh, big uh, motorcycle back on the road soon it's the suzuki bergman 400 uh, I've got to get a new drive belt for that because the one that's on it, when I bought it, the guy I sold, who I bought it off um, had a new belt on. And I did, uh, I've done since I've owned it, um, eight and a half thousand miles. So I'm like just over the threshold of the drive belt. So we need to get that replaced. And also we need to um, put a new windshield on the front because it's got a few little hairline cracks. Uh, at the moment, we're using our little Sim Simba, which is a carbon copy of a Honda 90. And it's um, it's pretty indestructible. I recently MOT'd it a few weeks ago, and it flew through. Not one advisory, so I'm over the moon about that. Uh, also, we're um, going to be buying a, a new um, couple of new projects. So uh, that should be good. I'm not going to reveal what they are yet, but they're MOT and tax exempt. So, yeah, awesome stuff. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we will be revealing that uh, soon. Will Jane, yes, yes. There's um, Where Will Jane is, there's one called Nangles, which is just back towards 12 heads. And uh, there's the Nangles portal, which you can gain access to. I think I, because that's pretty safe, to be honest. But one of my friends, I'm, I'm not going to mention his name. Um, there's a group on Facebook about um, exploring mines in Cornwall. And he went down a well-known one by himself recently. And he got kicked off the group because they didn't like him going underground by himself. Because, it, yes, it is dangerous, yes. But this particular person is, uh, I class as a, an expert compared to myself. I know a fair bit about mines and that because um, obviously I'm a tour guide for the National Trust at a well-known mine site called Eastpool Mine. And I've got mining in the family. So I do know what I'm talking about. But when it comes to hands-on exploration underground, I've done a bit, but I haven't done as much as this particular chap. And, uh, yeah, he got kicked off this group for going underground and mentioning the mine as well because they don't like people mentioning the mine's name and where it is and all because, obviously, we get a lot of folk coming down and that. And 
they want to go and have a look and they and these groups don't like don't like that sort of thing oh, there you go do you two wheel exploration yeah yeah I, I know some good sites there's a well-known on one on the north coast and there's been a few explorers come down last year i think it was the mine's called Cligger, and uh it's quite an interesting one um yeah it's quite good i also know probably about eight or nine different ones as well which are fairly easy but they're on the cliff edge so you need to have balls of steel basically <laughs> which is uh you know yeah it's good also found um about three derelict properties to explore down here uh so yeah we're going to document those soon uh two of them are in truro just on the outskirts one's near falmouth and there's a couple near halston which we need to have a look at but um my mate knows where knows where they are basically i've got them pinpointed in that but uh you know it's always best to have someone with you really in it folks you know Yeah, that's true, Matthew. It is true. You know, you you've got to got to know what you're doing, and yeah, it's best to have someone else with you, really, for safety reasons and what have you, and tell them where you are and all that jazz. I'm not going to do a lot of this underground exploring. I'm just going to do probably about three, three this year, three good ones. I got one beauty lined up, so um, yeah, it's going to be good. Yes, yeah, I'm I'm a big fan of military history myself, and there is some stuff down here in Cornwall. There's a, a Cold War bunker down the Lizard, which I did try to get into last year, but I got chased out with my dogs, <laughs> which was uh, interesting. I did, obviously didn't film that. Um, ROC posts, there's quite a few here in Cornwall. I've done a few of them. Uh, there's there's several which you can't get into. There's There's one down West Cornwall, which is sealed. There's one down the Lizard, which is sealed. Uh, there's one down at um, Falmouth area, which we did get into, and I did film that. I might do a follow-up video on that. Yes, Matthew, yes, it is. Yeah, so you probably know where that is, yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so we, we do need to film that. Yes, yes, two-wheel expression. Yes, it is. It's been sealed up. I went down there because um, somebody gave me a map of all the... Uh, Q400. Yes, yes, mate, you, you are right. So, yeah, um, well, the, like I said earlier, there is some that we're going to do, but we're we're almost ready to do it, but I'm not doing that by myself. So uh, so we're going to wait until this lockdown's finished, and then we're going to do a couple of easy ones. So there you go. Um, yeah, so RIPC post, the one down on the Lizard, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been sealed up. I did go down there deliberately to try and, this is some time ago, probably 2019, I might have done that. So uh, we need to, there's there's one, not, well, it's in, in between Camber and Redriff. I'm not going to say exactly where it is, but I'm sure you can find it because obviously somebody gave me a map of all the ROC posts. And uh, there's one that was uh, an early closure. And um, we went down, obviously it's on private land, but, uh, you know, uh, trespass is just a civil thing at the end of the day so you know who <laughs> and if the owner catches you and they ask you to leave then if you leave no problem but obviously you can't go back that's the do with trespassing so there you go it's not technically a crime um yeah so we went down that one we filmed it and it, it looked like no one's been in there for quite a long time so I, I think there's a couple of more. There was one down, uh, yeah, the St. Agnes one is up for sale. And I did actually get into that one a few years ago. 
the bunk beds are still in there and so on and so forth. But it's a lot of money just for a little room, really, like, you know. I don't know who's sealing them up, to be honest. Uh, it could be the council, could be the landowner, could be English Heritage, who knows, God knows. Uh, National Trust owned one over on the Roseland. I did actually go in that one. And, yeah, it was uh, very interesting. It's got all the original features still there, which is fantastic. Yeah, magic. Uh, where else is there some military stuff? Um, St. Anthony Battery, I've been over there a few times. That's owned by the National Trust. Uh, that's quite interesting. Um, the guns are not there, but the the um, lift mechanism was restored, I think, a few years ago. Oh, it sold for 50 grand, was it? Oh, I didn't know that. I, I knew it was for sale, but I didn't know it's been sold. But, um, no, I don't know if that is the land above it as well. I should imagine it is, because there is a, there was a fence around it. I don't know if it's still the case that, because I think access to that one might be an issue, because you've got to go across someone else's land to get to it, basically. Yeah, quite interesting. Yeah, so there's quite a few ROC posts around. Um, IKS Exploration have looked at quite a few around the Kent Dover area and uh, yeah we do have quite a few here in Cornwall of course but uh, some of them are accessible some of them are not by you know by being sealed up the one I think there's one near Madron there and that one um, that one's sealed up because we went there and had a look and you can't get into it at all like right, you know which is such a shame I have I I can't tell you it must have sold fairly recently because it was on um, BBC spotlight as well the Halston ROC post um, I tried to find that as well but there's nothing left of it it's it, the, the surface part because I've I pinpointed where it was um, they've bulldozed it basically it probably is still there but you can't see anything of it at all, which is such a shame. 15, yeah, I don't doubt that, to be honest. Up North Cornwall, there's uh, there's some. Um, I haven't really got that far because I'm I'm based in Pool, which is in between Camborne and Red Roof. So there's, in my area, there's only St Agnes, the one up um, in between uh, Camborne and Red Roof. Uh, that one's accessible, and I don't know of any other in that area. Yeah, yeah, two wheel expiration. Yeah, the one in Halston. Oh, it was destroyed in '91. Oh, crikey, that long ago. I don't know why they did that. To be honest, it's crazy because obviously it's history at the end of the day, isn't it? You know. So yeah. So we've got a, a, pl a plan actually. Um, later this year, hopefully, I want to go to Salt Ash, and. Um, we want to go, I forget the name of the place now, but there's some um, Napoleonic forts around there I want to look at. Ah, right, there's one in Nuki. I didn't know that. Didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we did do a few years, uh, well, I don't know when it was, wasn't it? Probably 2019. There's a radar, RAF radar station um, just outside of Nuki, on the Nuki Road, as you're going back towards St Agnes. Did do that, and uh, that was quite interesting. There's still lots of switchboards and what have you still there. We did go to Penhale Camp, and I didn't get in properly like um, the Secret Vault did, but I did do the firing range, which dates from World War II, which is quite interesting. There's been uh, quite a few people going on site, so I've been told, doing various bits and pieces. And apparently I've been told that they've got security there now, so that might be a bit of an awkward one. I suppose if you really wanted to do it, you could go at dusk or whatever, so you wouldn't draw attention to that. So uh, we've done Madrin Workhouse, which is, uh, it was a workhouse, then it was a um, slaughterhouse, I believe. It's quite interesting. Some of the buildings are very old. That's quite good. 
Um, I want to fly the drone down near Mounts Bay at some stage if I can. I want to fly the drone um, down West Cornwall uh, near the Crowns, but you've got to be a bit careful there because obviously the National Trust own the land and they don't like people flying drones from their properties. So I found a little bit of public land where I can take off from and basically fly over the top because they don't own the airspace, folks, at the end of the day. I know this because obviously I've had dealings with the trust a few times. So, yeah, so if you take off from public land and fly over their property, then it's okay. As long as you don't make a nuisance of yourself, I think. Like, I think what they don't like is flying over these stately homes and all that jazz. So, yeah, there you go. Half moon battery. Where where is that to, mate? Two wheel expiration. Yes, yes, Matthew. I'm aware that there's a an army base there or eight, some buildings there. I need to do that. So that's on the list to do as well. Whether it's um, land based expiration or fly over the top. Obviously, you've got to be a bit careful of. Uh, the, the air space around there because of the airfields and that but uh, yeah um we'll check the the map on the phone because i've got the obviously you meant to, when you're flying a drone you meant to check the airspace and uh i've got the um uva forecast and i've got drone assist which is quite a important thing to have so yeah i always make sure before i fly i check those like you Oh, yes, 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 I know, yeah. Yeah, I don't think English Heritage are too up themselves about drones, to be honest. So, yeah, we're going to probably take off from the public lands there and just fly over the top. That should be interesting. Um, whoop, cap. Oh, he's on the bed. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to do that as well. So to be fair, folks, I've got enough in Cornwall to keep me going for a while, really. Um, one stop is target practice. Right, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so going back to the mine explorations, we're only going to do about three, maybe four, but they're going to be easy ones, basically. Um, locations won't be given to protect the sites, of course, because there's, like I said, there's some groups that don't like the sites being mentioned and what have you, because they don't want people going down there with no experience whatsoever. I have some experience. I'm not an expert. I, I'm, I'm, I admit that I'm not an expert, but I know more than some people, shall we say. Um, so yeah, we've got that lined up. We've got the boat explorations lined up. So we're going to be doing the Carrick Roads. I want to do what Matthew Williams did, which is um, take the drone off from the boat as you're going along, which and land it as well. That'll be cool, wouldn't it? Um, up the Carrick Roads, there's an old mill site, which is um, just past the King Harry Ferry. There's a, a, um, a quarry around there or an old a quay around there. And uh, there's a little chimney there and that. So I wanted to kind of explore around there. That should be fun. And then we'll uh, take the boat down to um, Gweek, which is on the Halford River at high tide. And then we'll be blasting along there. So that should be good. There's some interesting pieces, bits and pieces that we want to have a look at around there. And then on the north coast, we can take the boat down to Portreef go out the harbour and we can go along where the cliffs are near RNAS Cold Rose, Portreef. And uh, there's a sewer outlet there that they created back in the 50s, I think it was. So we'll have a little look at that. So that'll be good. Yes, we won't be uh, looking for any shells or anything like that. Did you hear about the one that um, exploded in uh, was it Exeter recently? World War II um, Nazi one or Luftwaffe. 
God, blimey, it made some mess. Unbelievable. You wouldn't believe that that would go off like that after all these years, but it just goes to show, doesn't it? They're lethal. I think they found one out on the Cornish coast a few years ago, a mine, and they let it go off, but it didn't go off like the one in Exeter. My God. Crazy, crazy, crazy. So, um, maybe not this year, but maybe next year we might venture into Devon and further afield um, into South Wales. And, uh, yeah, so that should be fun. I don't think we'll be doing anything like that this year, but we will definitely be venturing out of Cornwall next year. So that should be fun. Yeah, it was a massive bomb because they, they showed it on BBC Spotlight earlier and uh, it's over six foot tall. So just imagine how much stuff was inside of that. Good Lord. Crazy, crazy. Yeah, I've got a metal detector, so we'll be bringing some metal detecting uh, later later this year. Obviously, he knows not the right time, really, I suppose, which is not, uh, you know, I'd rather, I would rather go out and, do things now but it's it's just all the uh all the crap to go with it basically isn't it folks you know it's not good yeah so there we are um don't know what else to say <laughs> come to a blank um yeah so i'm into steam engine as well and uh like i said i i uh I usually clean the locomotive down at Halston. It's going back to the um, West Somerset Railway. Uh, it belongs to the Somerset and Dorset Railway Trust. The engine's called Kilmerston. You might have seen pictures of it. I've, I've done videos of it. I did do a flyover at the Halston Railway uh, last year. Uh, the manager, James, my mate, uh, he gave me permission to do that, so I did. And it's drummed up a bit of support for the railway because, obviously, because of all this situation, it's been struggling. But um, they're down there at the minute. Well, not right now, but they're down there because um, they was donated some track and that from the St Ives branch because they relayed a load of railway track down there. So they've been stripping panels um, down there, busy in that. I've had a couple other commitments to deal with before I could get down there. N Night, uh, Matthew. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate that, mate. Yeah, so um, hopefully this year we might be able to get another engine on loan from another railway, so that'll be good. Um, yeah, so we've got uh, quite a few videos of, of me down at the railway cleaning the engine and so on and so forth. Uh, we was down there, um, not last year, the year before I was down, because we had to get the engine ready for the next day, because I had to light the fire and oil up and clean everything, and... Uh, Yes, I'll be doing another live uh, later this week, probably Wednesday, like I said, I should imagine. Um, we'll probably get the transfers on this aircraft then. Um, I don't know if you believe in ghost folk, but um, I was in the engine shed because we, we built a brand new engine shed to keep the engine in, to keep it basically elements off it. And uh, Travano is a new station that we created because there wasn't one there originally when the Great Western Railway was running the site. Um, Travano was in a, what well, is an estate, and it used to be open to the public. They used to grow uh, flowers there and so on and so forth. You guys might have been there in the past. It's owned by uh, private people now, and they don't allow anyone in there now, which is such a shame. But um, we were, I was in the engine shed, and James said he'd be down probably about eight or whatever. And I, I was there from about. Four three o'clock in the afternoon right until about half past nine ten o'clock in the evening and um two wheel expiration good night mate if you're going if you're not then stay with us <laughs> um yeah so we, i was in the engine shed cleaning the engine and i looked up and it was dusk it was dusk i think it was probably half nine quarter to ten something like that and i seen a dark shadow standing on our platform and me being me, I thought that was um, my mate James playing silly buggers. So I just pahooed it and carried on. So I carried on, looked up again, and it, the figure had moved. So I got my torch, looked down, and there was nothing there. 
Now, I'm not the only one that have seen stuff there. Um, several other volunteers at different times of the year have seen things. So, you know, quite a spooky situation there. Yeah. Okay, yep, you're still here. So that's fantastic. So you might have seen the Unity Wood Mine I did recently. Um, it's an uh, old, old uh, video, but I re-released it because I, I took bits out and put bits in sort of thing. And um, I was with a mate years ago. We was going through the woods, which obviously if you watch the video, you might have seen that there's woods there. And it was dusk again. And all of a sudden we heard this massive bang right behind us. And, and it absolutely startled us. I just couldn't really put my finger on it. And uh, to this day, we don't know what the hell that was, but it was really weird, really, really weird. Um, I'll tell you another place, which is really spooky and weird. Um, down near Zenner, there's a cottage that is associated with the demonologist Alistair Crowley. Now, um, I went, I've been there twice. Bird in the hand, hello there. And uh, there is something otherworldly about that place, you know. And there's been several um, explorers that have been down there, such as Sam and Jess. And um, oh, what's his, what's the other chap? I forget his name now. Uh, there's a paranormal group. He went down there with him, and they had uh, quite a few things happened as well. And also, um, Ghost Adventures of Cornwall went there, and they had lots of weird things happening. But there is a vibe about the place then, and there really is something something about it. Now, whether it's to do with Crowley or no, God knows. I don't know. Crazy, crazy stuff. Yeah. There you go. Yes, I've heard that there's um, some people caring for it or whatever. They've put a private keep out sign on it. Um, I think there's a house not back from there, which I think that woman's got something to do with it because I had a bit of an altercation with her and uh, because I was walking on this path, which I thought was public land. And she says, oh, this is a uh, private. You, you shouldn't be here. I said, well, there's no signs, Mrs. You know, so uh, yeah, but she's quite rude of me, so I think she might be the one that is kind of looking after that place. But the there is um people that own it and they don't live in Cornwall, and um, no, whether because I think a son and daughter own it now of the people that owned it, but before it got into this condition that it is. So I, I don't I don't really know the full story of it to be honest, folks. Oh yes, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, as I said to um, the other guys here, uh, we've got um, to show you again. Look, we've got a swordfish to build, which we're going to do next after this kit, and then after that we've got a Messerschmitt BF109 to build, another Nazi one. Have you noticed now, kit folks, the kits, they don't have a swastika anymore. Don't know why that is. When I was a kid, they used to have swastikas. I suppose it's not deemed uh, politically correct, is it, or whatever. So the last kit that we build um, will be a Lancaster bomber, and I'm going to do it in the Bomber Command uh, colours and that. So it'll be black underneath and camo on top, which should re look really, really good. Uh, might need to order some more cement, actually, because we're getting a bit getting a bit down on that now. We've got two of these. There's not much in that, like, you know. But it should keep us going. Yeah, it should keep us going. Yeah, I don't like um, people deleting history because it is important. And us guys out there doing these um, urban explorations, we're documenting history like ALW, exploration. He's he's documenting 
lots of World War II locations, which is fantastic. And uh, it never ceased to amaze me what stuff is actually out there. You just got to get out there and look at it, and you folks, you know, because we've got to document history. It's like since I've been doing my, this channel, obviously, we're getting fairly well known now because I've upped the game with um, obviously with the new GoPros, 4K cameras, and the drone and what have you. Because before that, we used to use like a mobile phone, and, it, and the, the quality was 720, and it was crap, <laughs> basically. Because <laughs> we start, I started this channel in 2015. And, uh, yes, yeah, yeah, I did see that. I've actually got a picture of it on the new camera we got here. <clears throat> I'll, I'll show you. So you must live fairly local then, a bird in the hand. I'll just show you. There you go. There it is. And uh, there's one as it was coming into. Uh, can you see that? There was one as it was coming in earlier. You can see how low it got by uh, looking at the the chimney pots there, look, which is like whoa. <laughs> probably put that on Facebook later. Probably. Let's see how that goes. That's a new camera, by the way. <coughs> Kodak. It's waterproof. And it goes down to 15 meters, 50 feet. And it's got, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, it's got a doodah on it. <laughs> optical zoom on it, that's it. It's got an optical zoom on it, which is quite good. Yeah, so I believe it was the Coast Guard. Yeah, so I don't really know what the situation is with that, but they were, they actually landed, they shut the aircraft helicopter off, and they must have been there 10 minutes or more, and then flew off again, so obviously something quite important, I should imagine. Oh, right, so you're just around the corner from me then. Yeah, fantastic. I live in between the two engine houses, which obviously uh, I active volunteer active well it was paid staff there i was the cleaner there at eastbourne mine but because of all this covid situation i haven't worked for nearly a year now which is crazy 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 but um i'm still part of the team so you know we'll be going back uh, you can tell how long i've been with the trust because i've got the the five-year volunteering badge and last year I got the 10 year one. I know the National Trust, the National Trust do get a lot of stick, and some of it is justified, folks. You know, I'm not defending the National Trust because obviously, you know, our mine site is not the usual thing that the Trust do. Uh, it's usually like stately homes and what have you, and I'm nothing for that. I'm an industrial um, enthusiast, archaeologist well, amateur archaeologist, and I'm to do with the steam movement. And I'm very well known in the steam movement here in Cornwall with the Preservation Society because um, I've had a lot to do with the West of England Steam Engine Society, the Helston Railway, and uh, obviously Eastpool Mine. So, you know, I'm quite well known in that field, which is quite good. I've got quite a few people that have... Uh, Give me a good reviews on TripAdvisor, a few things, because I'm a tour guide inside the engine house at Taylor's, and that is the largest engine in Cornwall. Don't want to bore you with all of that, of course. But if any of you come down to Cornwall, if you don't live in Cornwall, um, when we're back in normal times, if you visit the National Trust, ask for me, and uh, I'll give you a guided tour of the site, because I think you'll enjoy that. I know AL Exploration might enjoy that. So, uh, yeah. But we get normally we get folk from all around the world. We get a lot of Americans, we get a lot of Germans, we do get French, we get a lot of Australians, because obviously um, a lot of Cornish miners emigrated around the world, and uh, you know they, sometimes they like to come back. Now in Red Roof we got the Cornwall Studies Library, and a lot of folk go back there to trace their ancestors, which is quite inspiration. 
two wheel exploration yes i've got two vintage motorcycles on the way soon and they're restoration projects and of course they're mot and tax exempt i'm not going to say what they are just yet but they are a rare beast now <clears throat> which is awesome because i am a preservationist and a restorist and later this year we'll be buying back our old lister d stationary engine which should be fun so yeah take it to all the local rallies and that yeah and uh my mate's got a four inch scale ruston proctor you might have seen the videos of that uh, there'll be some more videos of that hopefully next this year maybe next year so that'll be fun so yeah so there we go yes yes i have been green laning i used to own series three land rovers i've had four of them and the not the last the last one was a bit of a bloody project to be honest and i sold it i sold it because uh, the circumstances wouldn't right for me at the time and i wish i didn't now but there you go we all make mistakes but i've got a couple in the pipeline so hopefully we might be able to purchase another one in the next few months or next year um the best one i had was a 88 inch it had overdrive and um fairly freewheeling hubs a nice beast we, we took it off road in got it stuck a few times but yeah yeah i i do miss the old girls i hopefully we'll get another one anyway um in the garage at the moment we've got a bedford rascal roma home you probably remember those and uh yeah we're gonna turn that into the stealth mobile and uh we're gonna use it for like if i need to go down the railway in that then i can just spend the night in it or if we're out on locations rather than rushing back home we can just spend the night in it sort of thing so that should be fun yeah there's quite a few um lanes around down here there's one uh, we went years ago with the club and we we went I think it was on the A30. Um, you go past St. Earth and you get down on that road. You're going to go about, I don't know, less than a mile. And there's a there's like a church or a chapel on the right. And there's a lane there. And eventually that takes you up to a place called Nankedra, which is uh, on the main road in between Penzance and St. Earth, St. Ives. And that was an epic one, that was. We, the club all they wanted was a, just a, an easy lane but we went down this other lane which we shouldn't have gone down and it was intense we had to get the shovels out the winches out oh my god it was fun in games awesome stuff so yeah i will i am looking at getting another series land rover i know somebody's got a series 2a for sale and a series 3 but the price isn't right right at the minute folks it really is not but uh you know time will tell if we can get another one or no yeah but my a couple of my mates because uh, we're basically we like vintage vehicles and that and we like modern classics and one of my mates who i've known for a very long time david he's got a ford fiesta mark ii which he's restoring which is it's not mot and tax exempt but it's not far off so it's a it's classed as a modern classic really uh, they're getting a bit rare on the ground now, aren't they, those cars? So, yeah. So we'll be doing some update videos with that at some stage in the future. Yeah, I suppose, I, well, years ago, because obviously I'm into motorbikes as well, and um, I, I had a, I've, I've quite a few Honda 90s over the years. Uh, the old step throughs. Well, the, the Sim Sim that we've got is basically a carbon copy of Honda 90, basically. But yeah, um, the old Honda 90 I had, I took it up Car Marf and went down the lanes and it was after a rainstorm that we had and I got bogged and the back wheel was absolutely packed in mud and it's going... And I was there about half an hour trying to get this thing out of here. And you know, Honda 90 is not very heavy, is it? But could I get it out of there? Could I? Heck, you should have seen me after I got out of that, that lane. I was covered in mud, absolutely from top to bottom. <laughs> 
fun and games folks fun and games oh you've got a 1978 GS750 nice yeah very nice yeah my father-in-law um, used to ride bikes he used to have a pan-european which is a uh, sort of bike that you you go long distance with like you know and uh, he got all over the place with that all over the place awesome bike but hondas hondas are generally renowned for being good aren't they and suzuki's and uh yamaha's and what have you it's just big name stuff isn't it like you know but i'm looking forward to getting the um, suzuki bergman back on the road now because uh, we've had it off the road for quite a while and i do miss it and uh I what well, was it? I don't know what year it was. I don't know if it was 2019 or no. But we went to North Cornwall. With it. We went to Morwell Ham Key from down here, and uh, it, it's an awesome bike because you just—it's like an armchair. You just sit in it. It's lovely. Oh crikey! Yeah, yeah. Isn't there like the mods up around that way? Like, like a, quite a few groups of the mods up around there. Because my, my father used to be a mod back in the uh, 60s and 70s. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he had a lot of grief from the rockers, <laughs> which is to be expected, isn't it? Like, you know, I wish I had his bike he had back then. Because he had, what was it? A, oh, what was it? I can't remember what bike it was now. I think it might have been a Piaggio. Yeah, but my mum used to ride bikes as well. She used to have one of these uh, step-through things that you paddle it just to get it going. And uh, she used to ride that around all over the place. And uh, my wife's gran used to ride motorbikes during the war, <laughs> which is awesome. So kind of biking's in the family in a, in a way. Yeah, do like bikes, folks. Always have done always will do or even when i can't ride a bike i'll always have a bike you know yeah there we go it sounds like somebody's sleeping next door to me <laughs> right so i think we're going to head off folks so yeah we got some nice content ready to ready to come in the future and um, obviously going back to the mine exploration we're going to make sure it's safe and, and secure before we do anything and I uh, won't be doing anything like that by myself. And uh, yeah, so that's all good. Going to doing some easy ones to start with. And going on from there, basically. But uh, just making sure we're safe. So that's what most people want to see us safe, which is what's going to happen. We're going to make sure we're safe. And, of course, I won't mention the name of the mines because I know there's some groups not going to mention the names that don't like anybody mentioning the names of these sites, which I won't mention them. But um, the ones that are well recognisable will, if you know Cornwall fairly well, you will know where it is. So, you know, I'm not going to dig a hole for myself on that one. <laughs> there you go. Sorry that you haven't seen my face, folks. I do apologise. It's just that we started off doing the live stream about the uh, this and that the 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 camera I've got it doesn't like being moved for some reason. It's, the clip on it is rubbish, to be honest. So we're going to get a better webcam at some stage. So yeah, but there we go. Not to worry, eh? Not to worry. So I hope you enjoyed this chat with us tonight and uh we will be back again later this week we're going to try to do a live stream on wednesday finish off the aircraft probably around eight o'clock maybe so if you're around that time then uh, pop along and say hi so thank you to everybody that's commented and thank you to all the five people that are watching right now i will be back as arnie says <laughs> So, we're going to end it here. So, there we go, folks. Cheers and gone until Wednesday. Good night, folks.